Hello and good evening. It is your good friend, Mr. Eric Norton, and I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Jake Hagan. What's up, Jake? How are you? What's up, man? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thank you, man. Uh, we were supposed to do this an hour earlier. Got some technical difficulties going on, but we got it fixed out now. Thank you for making time for me. I really appreciate that. Hey, I'm a kid from Oklahoma. The tech stuff, uh, you know, blame <laughs> it, blame it on the rain. Absolutely. Let's let's start right there in Oklahoma. Uh, so, Beckett, have you ever, I mean, if you're not familiar with Beckett, we're a huge, huge collectibles industry. There's a lot of a lot of famous collectors, uh, a lot of famous people coming out of Oklahoma. Uh, collecting wise with the Sooners up there. Uh, did you ever collect anything as a kid? Cards, uh, toys, comics? You know what I really got into is I got into NBA basketball cards. There I you thought, go. I thought it was really cool. This is, you know, I grew up, I'm, I'm a Jordan guy. So I grew up in the 90s. And uh, man, out of a pack, I got a super expensive, it was like a $500 Jordan card uh one time and then uh i still have you know my my still have my album filled up today with all of them i haven't i haven't cashed in yet so that was that was my jam though <laughs> very nice if you ever get back uh, in the dfw area by the way i caught the AEW show last year last december uh in it was in garland it was absolutely fantastic yeah, uh great you guys, great venue absolutely great venue all right. I, without going too far down the road, what's the biggest difference between the guys up in New York and AEW? <laughs> uh, I mean, really, it's it's kind of there's they're so different. It's hard to even compare them. It's mm -hmm. um, it was a a very refreshing um, breath of air coming coming into my life. That's for sure. Um, the other the other schedule was just way more grueling, mm -hmm. um, way more hard, and and also makes your your family sacrifice more. This schedule, one to two days a week, um, filming it's it's really just so much uh, nicer, and that's the biggest thing. Instead of being home for thirty six hours, I'm only gone now for thirty six hours, and it's uh, been just great for my, me and my family. And I, I get to be dad, which I love to do. And uh, I get to help Catalina uh, grow her business. I'm, I'm like her secretary, her coffee guy, anything <laughs> I can do. Very nice. She's hey, she's making a name for herself uh, with Fighter Fest coming up, and she she threw the glass of water in Cody's face. And is she kind of enjoying this role? Yep, yep. She as soon as I met her, I was like, oh, okay, you're gonna you're gonna be a star. And uh, I've always said that to her, and we're just trying to find the right way. And she's really doing well with her at-home workout program, her online fitness. And uh, this is just another avenue for her to really showcase her skills. And gosh, man, every time she comes on camera, she's just electric. Like, you can't take your eyes off her. Yeah. I get a little jealous, but, you know, uh, <laughs> it all goes to the same bank account. So Right. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, athletics, we want to give a shout-out to Zebra Athletics, my guy Kyle hooking this thing up. I really appreciate that, Kyle. Uh, tell us about that home gym he, he set you guys up with. It really has changed my life. The zebra mats, I had never, I'm an amateur wrestler since I was five years old, and I've only experienced like the rollout form of mats. And so to get the zebra puzzle pieces, it's mm -hmm. just been like a game changer. Uh, I could just, anytime I'm ready to go work out because of Kyle, because of these zebra mats, I could just open my garage door, turn on my AC unit and, and, and I'm there. I got a bag up in there and, uh, I got a fight coming up with Bellator. So hopefully you're going to see all the work I've been putting in on these zebra mats to really see how great they are because it, it like we have my brother and sister in for a weekend and we're all planning on working out together on the zebra bats tomorrow morning. That's awesome. But yeah. is, it, is it going to be some of those like dual push-ups that I, I see on Catalina's Twitter page? She like, she's doing push-ups off of you. Is that, is that like a normal thing? She's ridiculous. Like <laughs> I work out because I have to, she works out because she like enjoys it. It makes her happy. So <laughs> she is going to be torturing all of us for sure. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So you mentioned this fight with Bellator coming up. Is, is it nice for you to be able to split time between AEW and Bellator? Yeah, it really is important for me to like to keep that competition um, going strong. When I got away with it from with those guys in New York, as you said, uh, I think you really, you know, 
like I almost forgot about that person, that guy. And like for 25 years of my life, it's been, you know, work hard and, and, you know, and your results will come. And so it's been very refreshing on that end to get back in there and really get back to who I feel I think I am, get back to my Oklahoma roots. And uh, I, I get to wrestle every day now. Mm -hmm. I get to. I get to get punched in the face every day now too, <laughs> but you know, there's a bright side. Absolutely. Well, so I got, I told, I told Danny, I said, this is going to be a great interview if he doesn't kayfabe me and just stand there. Uh, <laughs> so, but like, that almost happened. Uh, right. Uh, what's that role? Like, like you seem to embrace that role standing behind Jericho being the muscle of the inner circle. You really dig that. It comes off really great across screen. How did you develop that? Um, honestly, right now, Jericho is just the best in the world, literally. Uh, he's at the top of his game, and he's really showing um, those guys in New York what they could have done mm -hmm. if they would have just, like, supported him more and give him, giving him the assets he needed to make the stories he wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I'm, of course I'm really into it. I get to be, sit there, and I got the best seat in the house to the greatest show in the world right now. It's right. incredible. Everything he touches is just gold. The fans are loving it. Um, I really think the culmination of it all showed in our stadium stampede match at double or nothing this year. Um, really a, a game breaker for television and for uh, for wrestling. And so uh, I really enjoy the character. Um, now, as far as like how it came about, Jericho told me he wanted me to dress, you know, like I could get into any Vegas club in the world. So mm. I was like, I'm a big, lanky guy, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. So Catalina had the idea. Of course, she dresses me, but I don't care what's laid out for me. I'm wearing shorts tomorrow, all right? <laughs> um, Catalina had the idea to do, like, Brad Pitt, Ocean's Eleven, and, mm -hmm. and that's with the tight polos and, and, the, and the slacks. So it, I really like it, and it, it's comfortable, and I got some great shoes that are, like, that I can, I can do anything in. And uh, honestly – you know, they're not speaking so much. It's 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 nice. I get to sit there. It's like the easiest job in the world, and everyone thinks I'm a tough guy. <laughs> well, like I said, you you do it perfectly. You do it wonderfully. So uh, I've I've done enough wrestling interviews to to know like some topics to hit. So I'm gonna hit you with some rapid pace, just like off the top head, off the top. If you can go with me, okay. All right, quick answers. Uh, quick answers. Uh, two three words, maybe it's in us the most. Let's Best. go. All right, here we go. Favorite opponent? Uh, Rey Mysterio. Oh, what? Ooh, that's right. Now i got to stop there. Why Rey Mysterio? Is it a, is it a styles, styles make matches kind of thing? Well, if Christian hears this podcast, he's going to be very upset with you. He gets very upset with me when I don't say he's my favorite opponent. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm, I'm a big guy, but I always enjoy working with a lot smaller guys so we can do the high flying and I can catch them out of midair. And then here comes the big counter. It just works better. Um, the big guy on big guy aspect is cool. And I've had good matches like with Big Show and Randy Orton in those aspects. But, like, Ray is Ray, and anything he does is, is right. just fun to be a part of. Um, and he was one of the first people that I had really big matches with, and so it's part of my heart. All right. I, I completely get it. Ray Mysterio is an amazing performer. All right, next question. Toughest guy outside of the ring? Ooh, probably Roman Reigns. Yeah? Probably Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good buddy of mine, and sometimes when the, the Hank Williams gets playing, uh, you know, we got to test each other. So I felt him. I don't, <laughs> I don't, know, if I, I don't know if I want to fight him. All right. Most underrated guy in the ring? Uh, most underrated guy in the ring? Hmm. I could say Jake Hager, mm -hmm. but, we, but we won't. <laughs> um, let's see here. You know, right now I'm a, I'm a real big fan of Darby Allin. And oh what yeah, he's doing in AEW, I think he just moves differently, and uh, it just catches your eye. And so I'm really excited for him to get healed up and come back. Darby and Orange Cassidy first, both those guys come to mind. Yeah, I would say you know Orange is my is my big brother. He's my shoot big brother. So I would say him, but he he crossed the line, and and now uh, Chris is going to have to handle him. You're going to handle that, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, tough. Toughest finish. Like, who, who, who's got the toughest finish out there? 
Uh, I mean, when I was at those guys in New York, uh, Kali was a pretty, pretty bad mm. one to take the, the big hand yeah. over like, it, like his fingers literally bent over your head. Um, other than that, the, you know, it, the toughest finish would take would be from some new guy who they were, who they were trying to push because everything else, like the guys who have been there forever, you know, we knew what we were doing and how to trust each other. Sure. Favorite match? Oof, too many to count. Um, Christian um, at Backlash in 09 for the ECW. Of course, any of the stuff with Mysterio for the world title, mm -hmm. the money in the bank. Uh, the stuff with Rusev was really important to me, and it was really cool to have that USA aspect and just to be a part, you know, and help be one of the generational wrestlers who got to kind of play the USA character and I'm not gonna lie every time they would get out there and they would just start chanting it like it gives me goosebumps just now talking about it yeah um and Rusev is amazing uh amazing athlete amazing worker and uh that whole storyline was just fire from the beginning and they didn't know what they had yeah that that I remember that that was a, that was a great great storyline all right who have you learned the most from outside of the ring in the back when you're hanging with the boys who's dropped the most knowledge Dutch Mantel, yeah. dirty, dirty Dutch Mantel, Zeb Coulter. Funny, the first night that, uh, uh, so once he came on the scene, I, I had to drive him around, um, mm -hmm. which was an honor. I'll put riding around with him up there with winning a world heavyweight championship. Um, first night we're there. Um, it's in Texas. It's right before uh, Mania in New York, Mania 29. And uh, Taker shows up to do like a little warm-up match. Mm -hmm. And so we're sitting there talking and Dutch is like, Hey, let's go. And I'm like, Hey, they kind of want us to sit around and watch all the matches. And he's like, for what? And it's like, so I can learn. And he's like, you can learn more with me in five minutes down the road than you can watch in 10 of these matches. Let's go. So <laughs> I, I didn't even ask. I just grabbed my bag, and <laughs> got in the car, but he was right. Uh, man, learned so much from Dutch. It was really incredible. Uh, he has over 40 years experience in this business. So you think about how this culture has changed from the 1990s or the early 2000s. Like think about the 1970s and 1980s Memphis, you right. know, where they really stuck roots and really created some things. And then he has the experience in Puerto Rico where he took uh, Carlos's uh, clones flailing uh, promotion and then instantly had them like at 11 on the Nielsen's rating, like right. just e electric, you know? So did, did Dutch ever tell you about his, his, uh, run with macho man? No, no, he hasn't. Like, so Dutch had a run with macho man before they, before they both got to New York and it is absolutely fabulous work all the way around from everybody. I mean, one on one hand, you got the Macho Man, and then, then the other, you got Dutch, who is who was dirty and gritty and grimy. It's a great little thing to catch. Natural heel. Just a yeah. natural heel. And he's the nicest guy in the world, but he loves to be booed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. That's a good point. All right. Uh, who's the biggest river in the locker room? Well, give, me, <laughs> give, me, give me a guy in New York and a guy in the AEW locker room. Who's the biggest river? Um, I don't think I've been in the AEW locker room uh, <laughs> long enough to, to see it yet. Uh, a lot of a lot of antics. Tony Khan uh, likes to have some fun though. So yeah. right right now we'll we'll give him the crown for uh, biggest river. That's funny. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's uh, you know, his leadership there has really trickled down, and that's why it's been like such a refreshing place to work for and you can see how the guys respond and follow him because of the way he leads and so mm -hmm. it's it's been fun and also you know he'll bust your balls and like i said he's he likes to rib uh at the other locker room man there's so many uh so many things that we would try to do it was usually me and our truth and uh the clones eddie and, or primo mm -hmm. and uh his cousin and it's usually us always trying to rib Michael Kyoto. Uh, one time before an early morning flight overseas, uh, we put a bottle of massage oil taped to a black rubber member <laughs> hidden in this carry-on bag. And sure enough, it got found uh, at the security. And they took it out in front of everybody and held it up. Like, hey, nice. so this is yours. <laughs> He grabbed it out of his hand and he threw it at Primo as hard as he could. Oh, man. 
<laughs> that's a hell of a story, man. Oh, oh that's man. great. Uh, yeah. You brought up Taker earlier. Uh, yeah. What's What's the best advice Taker ever gave you? Oh man, you know Taker has a reputation because everything you hear about him is is real. Is shoot, mm -hmm. and uh, that night in uh, in Texas, uh, you know, I had just come off of some unfortunate events. Um, I, I, um, I don't really need to talk about that. Everybody knows yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so this was like the week after, and of course the week after I run into Taker, and I'm like, God, you know. <laughs> And it's just like, uh, but it was great because it was exactly what I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And he pulled me aside and we're talking and, you know, I was trying to explain. And uh, he was like, hey, look, and he's like, this job isn't worth it unless you're on top making that top money. Right. And, you know, that's one of the best things he's ever said to me because it really was like an insight from one of the biggest top guys ever. And, of course, that's what we all want to provide for our families and reach a certain level but mm -hmm. it was also like you want to be there as an artist you want to be in the main events if you're going to give your body like this then let's do it for sure. you know for something big and i think more than anything that's what he was saying and uh i really appreciated it that's awesome we got one more rapid fire and then i got a few more and we'll wrap it up okay i talk slow i don't know if these are rapid fire that's okay you're, you're giving me enough insight when i I did this with Mark Henry a couple of years ago, and he was like, he was bam, bam, bam. He was really witty too. But you're you're giving me a little bit of better better answers. Um, all right, last last rapid fire for you. Who's your who's your dream match? Who's somebody that you haven't gotten the ring with, and that you really want to make that happen? Um, I mean, the sky's the limit right now. I really mm -hmm. love the AEW roster. Yeah, I really I really love watching um, Ray Phoenix. And what he does in the ring, he just makes it look so easy. I think that could be, you know, uh, a great matchup. I think, uh, you know, Darby, like I mentioned, I think Sammy Guevara would be an interesting matchup. We've already wrestled each other in Lucha Underground, and he jumped off a 20-foot, like, platform mm. on top of me. Uh, we're friends now, lucky for me. <laughs> but... You know Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks. I would love to. I would love to have a handicap tag match against the Young Bucks, and and really see what they can do. I think uh, the their style mixing with my style is really, or you know, everyone's style kind of mixing at AEW is really uh, an asset for us, and we're only going to find better ways to exploit it, like we did in the Stadium Stampede match. That's so. That brings up my next point: the Stadium Stampede match. Tell me about how that was conceived. Who thought about that and brought it to life? Because that was absolutely fantastic. Well, you know what? It was um, a really bummer uh, that we had to do the, the this whole no audience pandemic mm -hmm. thing um, because AEW really had some big things. I mean, Matt Hardy had to debut to the mm -hmm. first no audience crowd. Imagine that in front. That was supposed right. to be in front. Of, that was supposed to be in front of twelve thousand people. Mm. You know, so um, it sucks, but it's cool that we kind of found a way and we kind of realized like, hey, this the fans kind of are on, on their seats again. They're on their edges. They don't know what's 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 going to happen now because of it. So we kind of used uh, the no audience situation that we were in and we found that street fight between mm -hmm. me and Jericho and, and Sammy versus Kenny and Matt and. Like before that, we kind of had the brainchild idea. You know, a lot of this stuff is is mostly Chris and uh, and and the guys at the Elite um, and Tony. Tony's involved all the way. Uh, but like after that street fight, we kind of exposed that we already knew what we were going to do at the Stadium Stampede because it was just like a new avenue, mm -hmm. and and it's it's like almost like a like a like a fifth dimension of pro wrestling, like. I don't right. know. It's it's different, and we had the crowd around it, and so it kind of spawned from the day of that street fight. Yeah, that that, and, that it was nuts, man. It was just and, nuts. <laughs> and we and like honestly, when we showed up to uh, you know get the ideas for the stadium stampede on the Thursday, we still no one knew what the what the dimensions were for the match, what the rules were. We just knew it. we're filming in the stadium. Let's make it cool. <laughs> I think I'm going to get burned here. Uh, I have one question from the audience. 
I don't know if I should ask this or not. Uh, can you tell me what Brock Lesnar smells like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my grandfather always told me that desperation is a stinky cologne, and I think he was wearing it. Uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, all right, man. You mentioned Tony Khan a couple of times. We know where you came from. You've, we've, you've heard great things about the Khan family. What's the biggest difference between the way things were ran where you were at and the way con the Khan's run it? Tony treats every one of his, uh, every one of his uh, employees or members of the roster like an athlete. He mm. owns the Jaguars. He owns Fulham. Uh, I'm sure they got another club as well. But he treats us all like athletes. And I think that's the biggest difference because athletes truly are assets to the organizations they are involved in. Mm -hmm. Vince and Hunter would call us assets, but they didn't mean it because they didn't treat us like assets. Sure. And so just like the little details that Tony does, he makes sure uh, – I, I can't really go into it, but like that's the essence yeah. Yeah. of it. And, and it's almost more of a respect thing, I feel like. That's awesome. Now, two more questions we're going to call tonight. I've I, we've all watched Cody Rhodes kind of like grow up in front of our eyes and become this amazing, amazing star. And I know that what you guys got going on next week, but don't K Fabi talk to me a little bit about the maturation of Cody Rhodes. Yeah, very good question. It, it's really incredible. Um, I mean, think about two years ago or three years ago in 2017, he's six, nine months out of out of the Fed and he's one of the hottest wrestlers on the world without a platform, just working independent shows. Mm -hmm. So like the Cody Rhodes that I wrestled with uh, with We The People and the Real Americans and the tag matches and then, then the singles matches, that was kind of like Cody in, in school as I was. Mm -hmm. And then. And then overnight, Cody graduated, and he became one of the best in the world and really showed his true potential. And it, I would have to say, like, we got a lot going on right now, and tensions are high, but I'm impressed with him as an executive and his leadership. And mm -hmm. you see, as well, you see men following him. Right. And, and it takes a lot to get men to follow you. And so I think it's impressive, and I think he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely great. Now, the final question, and we're going to wrap this up. Since we've done this now, can I be a part of the inner circle? Can I be Can I be part of the bubbly crew? <laughs> well, you got to get the name right first, the bubbly bunch, bro. The bubbly bunch? <laughs> I saw that T-shirt. I was like, I got to get that. I don't know if you got it on my size, but I got to get that. But, the pain maker posse. Well, you're going to have to fight Catalina for it right now because right. she's putting a, in a pretty good case to be the I don't next. know if I could do that. <laughs> yeah. She, she's massive. I don't know if I want to do that or not. All right, she's man. A good right hand. Yeah, she sure does. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks so much, Jake, for making time for me. I appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and just put Eric Norton, member of the inner circle, next time I interview somebody and see if anybody notices. But I really enjoyed this, man. Chalk it up. Official. Chalk Nice. It's official. Y'all heard it here. Good night and God bless everyone. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you.